Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to the I Don't Even Know podcast. I'm Em, I hope you are doing well. Today, I'm here, All American Homecoming, Season 3, Episode 6. We're getting close to the end. We are officially halfway. Which is, and, like, obviously we still have seven episodes to go, but we... We're getting there. We're getting there. It's almost the end, and I'm pissed off. I mean, I always say this. I'm so mad it got canceled. But specifically, I'm upset because I don't know where the fuck things are going. And usually, like, with final seasons, they start to wrap up at this point, but they didn't know. So I'm like, what the hell's gonna happen? It's like I'm so thrown off by everything. Like, I was expecting the season to obviously be stressful because it is a drama. And I was expecting like stuff to happen like insane things like with relationships and just tennis and stuff like that but i wasn't expecting someone to have cancer and they threw that at us like last episode and like it's like i just don't know where anything's going now and it's just like what the hell can she just be happy like can they not like i get it's the final season and you wanted some like drama and like some sort of big thing and storyline for her that's not involving a relationship necessarily even though like Lando and her are gonna get together but you know it you know what I mean it's like they throw this at us we didn't need this like yes I I know it's important to spread awareness about this and like I get it and I like I haven't seen that many shows where this happens like a main character has breast cancer like I know that happens in shows a lot like you find out from the shows I've seen I haven't really like seen it much and like obviously it's important like I said to spread awareness about it but like I, I like fuck can she just be happy like girls have gone through shit and now she has to deal with this it's like I don't know how she's gonna fucking pull it off like yeah she's gonna be like fine at the end of it or at least i i'm hoping she is i assume they're gonna have her like by the end of the show be like better in a way like obviously with the way she's doing it like she said the treatment so she can play tennis it could come back later and like even more aggressive so like we don't know like but it's like i just wanted her to thrive this season you know specifically because it's the last one and also because everything with tennis and, like everything she's gone through like i wanted to see her thrive like win a championship do all this shit and i mean maybe she will and honestly that would be sick if she wins a championship with dealing all of this like that would be incredible and i kind of hope they do that but it's right i don't see it that way it's like since we're halfway through the season usually shit like starts to like really get intense and it is, but, like, I'm used to having another season, and so now it's, like, how are they going to do this, you know? Like, how are they going to wrap this all up? Because I know shit's going to happen with her in tennis. Like, Lonnie's going to find out somehow in, like, the next few episodes, and I would be fine with that if we are getting more episodes, first of all, because then that would be different. Or, like, another season so we can, like, see what happens after that. We're not getting it. So, it's, like, what the fuck's gonna happen? Like, I'm worried she's gonna have to give up tennis. Like, I'm really worrying that's gonna happen. And I know a lot of people think it, it's gonna happen. And I'm one of those people. But it's, like, I don't want it to happen. It's, like, I want her to do, like, what's best for her health. And, if yeah, if quitting tennis and, like, stopping is what's best for her in her state yes like i'm 100 percent for it but i'm gonna get i can't speak i'm gonna get upset because like this is her journey like her tennis journey and it's fucked like oh my gosh like what the hell is i'm so stressed about her like i just need her happy i just need her to be okay and it's gonna like be so hard for me to like watch her go through like her treatments and everything and see like how drained she is it's gonna be rough like i don't like seeing that with any character even if i like don't like you like a character i don't like seeing stuff like that because it happens to real people 
you know, and, like, it happens in real life all the time. But, like, specifically with characters I love, it's so hard for me to see them go through shit because of how into it I am. And I know I'm going to probably be crying seeing her in pain. Like, at the beginning of the damn episode, when, like the dream she had and she was like waking up and it like it was that first when she was okay and then like the cancer was getting worse and worse and everything I almost cried because I was like holy shit so this is what we're doing I did not think it was a dream I was panicking like I went on Twitter and people were like what the hell is going on because like I I don't know why I didn't think about the fact that it was probably a dream I thought they were just doing these jumps so we would like see her at like her lowest or something which I don't want to see like first of all I don't want to see but like when like we saw her at the end of the dream and she lost her hair I was like oh my gosh like I kind of had a feeling that that might happen because like chemo even though we know she's not doing chemo she's doing other things so she's not going to lose her hair I assume unless like turns out she has to do chemo but like seeing that it's like oh my gosh like they're really like going at it and like really like doing this t- jump so we can see her and like see how she's dealing with it and I was like I was stressed because I was like oh there goes tennis like there there it goes like what the fuck like, like yeah tennis is probably going out the window but in a different way and I'm like oh my gosh I was panicking like I mean, I knew it was a dream once she went over to, like, the, where the pictures were, where she met Damon, and it was, like, in honor of Simone Hicks. I was, like, okay, so this is a dream. Like, I'm so thankful, because, like, I did not want to have to witness that for the rest of the season and see her, like, going through it. It's, like, fuck. Like, obviously, we're going to see her go through it for the rest of the season because of her treatments and, like trying to do tennis and like dealing with everything but as of right now it won't be as severe as she was in her dream because she was stressed because she didn't know what stage she was now you know she's stage one and like she'll be fine for the most part I mean I guess we'll have to see like I was honestly worried that they were going to throw some shit at us and like have her be like stage three or something I don't remember what like the worst stages to be honest i just thought she was gonna be like a lot higher like stage was gonna be worse and she was gonna be a farther along and that, that they were gonna do that route which i'm happy they're not because i think the way they want to do it is like have her keep playing tennis for as long as she can and then like eventually she'll step away which is smart honestly i would be more pissed off if she like just had to stop tennis like right away Like, this episode, I was kind of worried that it was just going to stop. And, like, she was going to be like, okay, I can't do it anymore. Or, not Simone, but, like, someone was going to tell her she can't do it. Which they did. But, like, I'm happy she didn't listen because I was going to be really pissed off. Like, yeah, she's probably going to have to stop because it's what's best for her health. And I completely support it. And I just want her to do what's best for her. But I want her to fight a bit for it, you know? Especially because this show is about her journey in with tennis it's like that's what started it all are you kidding like we can't can't give up that easily like we really can't so we'll see in the next few episodes like i honestly think lonnie's gonna find out and like have her stop which like i don't think it's gonna happen as soon but then also I do from the trailer cause for next week because Amara is com- coming up, coming home, oh my god, coming up, what the hell, is coming home. And she's going to find out, probably, and if she finds out that Simone's still playing tennis, she's going to tell Lonnie. Or somehow Lonnie's going to figure out in another way. Like, obviously, Thea's helping Simone and got her, Lonnie to say yes to Simone training with Thea's coach for the preseason to like help her like help her stay on track of appointments and treatments and like so Lonnie doesn't figure it out which is smart because I was wondering how she was going to pull it off 
like, Simone can, like, she's insane, she'll pull it off somehow, but I was questioning it, because it's, like, it's hard to hide something like this, and she's gonna see Simone is off her game, and she kind of already could tell, because there were times for the test were lower, or no, higher, you want it to be lower, they were higher, the numbers were higher in last year, so, like, she's kind of already knows something is off, or she maybe just thinks she was stressed, tired, I don't know. But, like, if she saw Simone, like, during her treatments, training, she would know something was wrong. So, I think it was smart. Shout out to Thea. Thea's really coming through. Really coming through. I'm so happy she's here. Not just because I love her, but it's, like, she's coming through and she's really going to help her. That's why I'm so happy she's in the next episode because I didn't think she was. It's, like... I need Thea to be in the rest of the episodes because she's going to be so helpful with Simone and everything. Because even though she hasn't gone through something like this, like the only person who's gone through something similar in a way is JR with his illness. But Thea, because like she plays tennis, she'll be able to help her and just like be there for her with tennis and like maybe train her a little more, just help her get strong and just also cover for her. I don't know if it's a good thing that they're lying, because it, it's probably going to go downhill, and I feel like somehow it's going to fuck, the treatment's just going to fuck it up, and she's going to like get even more tired, it might wear her down even more, but for now, I'm happy like Thea's there and like covering for her, but then I hope if it gets to a point that it's too much, I hope Thea says something, like she better. Like, I cannot deal with seeing Simone, like, in pain. Which we're obviously going to see. It's, like, stressing me out. It's, like, I don't like seeing anyone go through this. You know, like, I know people who have had breast cancer in the past. And, like, I didn't really get to see them, like, when they were... No, I did some people the people in my family I didn't get to see who've had it I didn't get to see because they lived in a different state and it was like I think one of them was during COVID so I didn't really get to see like I wasn't really there for it and I didn't get to see it but there are some other people who I know who aren't part of my family but I'm close with who have has gone have gone oh my gosh have gone through it and I've seen it and I've seen how exhausting it is and yeah she's not going to be doing chemo which is what was so exhausting but it's still even with that it's going to be exhausting especially when you're an when you're an athlete like it's going to be so rough and I'm not ready to see it but I also want to see how they do it you know if they portray it well and I just want to see how everyone's there for her because they're already showing up and she hasn't even started treatment which if they haven't shown up already even though she hasn't I would have been pissed off because, like, even though she hasn't started it yet, she found out she has cancer. It's stressful. Like, she's freaking out. Especially about, like, tennis and everything. And everyone was there for her. Or, by the end of it, was there for her and supportive in their own way. Like, Nate was not happy at the beginning. Which I get. I feel like, honestly, if I had a friend who was in this position, like, had can- breast cancer, I maybe would have been, like, Nate. I honestly, like, of course I would want to be supportive from the start, but she had a point, you know, like, you cannot put yourself at this risk, like, you're going to fuck up so many things, like, you cannot do this, like, I get you don't want anything changed, like, you get how hard you worked for it, but it's going to change some things, and when you get ill, you sometimes have to quit the sport you love, no matter how hard it is, like, I know so many people who, who, could make it but they couldn't because like an illness or an injury or something happened it's like she she was right I mean I'm happy she came around because I want everyone to be supportive and someone not to be arguing with anyone and like having issues but Nate was kind of right she had a point it's like you're risking like your life basically for this and like it could fuck things up even more like, your treatment, like, might not work as well if you're doing this. Or it's, like, 
you're gonna get even more injured it's not going to help you like you need to focus on yourself and not risk it like honestly I think tennis is going to risk it and make it even worse so I'm kind of nervous but like Nate had a point I'm thrilled she came around like obviously because like I said I don't want someone having issues with anyone and I like how Nate Nate like at the end of it had a schedule of like who's gonna take her to appointments and like like a meal plan and all this to help her and I'm happy like she realized like this is a part of her life like she's not ready to give this up she's ready to try and if like doesn't work out then like it doesn't work out like as of right now she wants to try her best and like give it a go which I'm happy she came around I'm happy they're all going to be helping her and taking her to her appointments procedures and everything like I'm ready to see like all of them kind of come together like we really did this episode for the most part but like I'm ready for it to see it even more especially when she starts her treatments and everyone's like together like really like a family like I'm I was saying at the beginning of the season I was wondering how like they were going to do like the family dinner and like how they were going to be a family and everything without Amara and Damon and all that but they're doing a good ass job like honestly I'm living especially because Thea's back like seeing how they're all there for each other especially this episode at the end and just seeing how everyone was like so supportive towards Simone even if they didn't necessarily agree with her they were for the most part supportive you know like Keisha for example she of course was going through it because seeing Simone was reminding her of her mom who died of breast cancer which I honestly did not remember I don't know if that was brought up at some point like in the past seasons but I didn't remember I'm gonna feel like an idiot if it was brought up but like it makes sense why she was like kind of going through because I was worried about her like throughout this episode I thought it was maybe something with Cam because he's ghosting her and like basically told her like stop texting me I mean he didn't necessarily he didn't say that but he's like actually he said that in like different words he's like no go away and so I thought she was stressed about that and stuff like and just the fact that Simone had cancer because obviously that's very stressful but it makes sense why she was like freaking out and wanting to help everyone and just like just so upset and sad because like she w- had to see her mom die of cancer and she was young and so she didn't really understand it at the time and because she was young she didn't really see everything but now she's going through it again with Simone and even though Simone's most likely I mean not gonna die from it because she's not that far she's just like worried because everyone said to her when she was younger oh your mom's gonna be okay your mom's gonna be fine everything's gonna be fine people are saying that about Simone which everything probably will be fine but you can never be sure and it's just bringing up old memories and it's just not good for her especially with everything else like with college and like grad school like she's stressed enough the way it is like she's having issues with her relationship she doesn't really know why right now and just all this like a lot for her but I'm still happy even though she was going through it she still showed up like at the beginning of the episode when Simone couldn't sleep and she came out was like talking about her about tennis how she's still gonna play and all that and Nate was against it Keisha was like trying to calm her down and be like it's fine like I'll talk to Nate she'll come around and she even went to the appointment with her like was so supportive there too and it just makes me so happy seeing that and I think she's like wants to go to those things and like it's being like the way she is because she's witnessed it you know she's seen people or like her, not, I don't know maybe other people as well but she's seen her mom go through it and she wants to be there as much as she can for Simone because she wasn't able to when she for her mom because she was young I'm like I'm happy she's able to do it now and like really just be supportive in there and help as much as she can and like I'm just happy that like she talked to JR about it as well because like yeah I think it would have been better if she talked to someone else because obviously they are going to get together and like I said in past episodes I like them as friends nothing more so like I'm happy she talked to him but I'm happy she didn't 
you know, because I know they're going to get together and then it's going to be different. But, like, I'm happy, okay, I'm happy she talked to someone and, like, let it out and explained why she's kind of spiraling and why she's so emotional and just what's going on. Because, like, her, go, probably going to the appointment with Simone was triggering. Even though she was young when her mom died from cancer, she, like, she still remembers it and she might maybe went to appointments and is, like, or just hearing about it and, like, hearing about treatment and everything could have been triggering for her and like she just wanted to make everyone else feel better because like she's feeling like shit she's spiraling so she wanted to help everyone else so she's like that's why she was doing trying to help Simone with everything and that's probably why she was helping JR and Gabby and another reason she probably was helping JR and Gabby was because they're both having issues in their relationship and they like don't really know why and like Gabby and Cam both saying everything's fine, but, like, they know it's not. Which, honestly, is basically just a hint for them to get together. But, like, I'm not ready. But Keisha did did come through, and I'm happy she came through and is a good friend. I'm going to say friend, even when they get together. Because, like, unless I do start shipping them, honestly, who know, who the hell knows? Because I was team Damon and Simone. Until Lando popped up. And, like, we got to see them. So, maybe, like, when, once they actually get together, I'm going to be like, oh, okay, they're kind of cute. But for now, no. Like, JR and Gabby are so cute. Like, their whole, like, little date. I know we didn't get to see much of it, but it was so cute. And the way JR, like, wants, like, wanted to do something special for her. And, like, yeah, he... He went to Keisha about relationship advice, which is fine now. It's going to bite them in the ass later. But, like, I love how he went to her and was like, I want to do something special for her. And Keisha gave, put it all together, obviously, and helped him. But it's like, the fact that he thought of that, it's like, I want to celebrate her. Not just because she got, like, that job. It was, it was a job or something with school. I'm not even sure. Because she got that opportunity. It was just because he doesn't, he feels like he doesn't celebrate her enough, and she deserves to be celebrated, which is so true, like, I don't care, like, 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 what's going on in a relationship, if, like, something happened, something don't, didn't, like, you always should be celebrated in some way, like, I don't care if you, you, nothing's been going on, you've had a shitty week, like, someone needs to celebrate you at some point, you know, like, if you're in a relationship, do that, like, I mean, I'm not in a relationship, so I don't know if I should be saying, but I think a healthy relationship is like, no matter what, even if nothing big happens and there's not really something to celebrate, you should still celebrate the person for just being them and like how good they've been to you. Because Gabby has been incredible. Like, yeah, she was pissed about baseball and everything at first, which completely understandable with JR's medical history. But she came around, is incredibly supportive. And has been helping him through everything. And has been there for him. Since he got sick. So like. She deserves to be celebrated. JR and Keisha came through. I know. Once Gabby figures out about JR and Keisha. That they like each other. She's probably going to be pissed off. That she helped. But for now I'm going to enjoy that. Whole dinner. And the fact that it was really cute. Like find a man who will dress up in costume for you. Because, like, obviously, I didn't I didn't know what they were talking about half the time because it was a, a book. And I don't know if it's a real book or not. I will look it up when I'm done and maybe add it to my reading list. My incredibly long reading list. But it was cute. Very cute. And I'm happy we're getting the amount of them we are right now. Before I lose them. Because we didn't get them last episode, I don't think. Or if we did, I don't remember. I'm almost certain we didn't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she wasn't in the last episode. So I'm happy we're getting a good amount of them. Before. I lose them. Like, fuck. I honestly thought they were breaking up this episode. I'm not gonna lie. I keep thinking that they're going to break up Jar and Gabby and Kay and Keisha to get them together. Especially because we're halfway through the season. It's not like they can do it in the next season. And honestly, at this point, I'm thinking maybe they'll get together in the finale. 
it's like they're going to break up soon, but then it's going to lead to them getting back together or getting together. I don't know. It's like I expected them to break up by now. But like I'm happy they didn't, but then I'm mad they're dragging it because I just want it to happen. So like I can see if I'll actually like JR and Keisha together or if I just want them as friends. Which most likely I'll just want them as friends. Like fuck. I mean, I think it's going to happen. Maybe not next episode because Amara's Amara's coming, but it might happen episode eight, right? Yeah, okay, this was episode six, so in two weeks, I think, for episode eight, I think it might happen. Because here's the thing, obviously we're going to have other issues next episode that's not involving Simone's breast cancer and Amara coming home and finding out about it. We're going to have other drama, we always do, involving other characters, but I don't know if Cam's going to bring it up because of everything that's going on. Like, I honestly think that Cam might bring it up to Keisha or Gabby at some point. Most likely Keisha. But then I also feel like he might talk to Gabby about it. And then that's going to, like, kind of lead them. Like, I think, at, like, latest episode 8, he's going to confront Keisha or JR about it and ask them if they have feelings for each other. Or Gabby's going to, like, notice something, too. Like, it has to happen soon, Right? Or am I just an idiot for thinking it's going to happen soon? Like, it's obviously going to happen. And, like, I've been saying it's going to happen It's like, episode fucking two. And I keep thinking they're going to break up because they always have fights. But they don't. At, at least Gabby and JR. I think Cam and Keisha right now, they're leading to the breakup. You know, because when they have their issues in episodes, or so far this season, they always come to terms with it and, like are fine by the end of the episode. So, I'm thinking, because they're not, and he's ghosting her, when he comes back, it's going, like, they're going to break up. And then, Jer and Gabby. I don't know. I'm mad I have to think about this, too, because it's like, I'm already stressed enough about Simone having cancer. Or, like, Actually, I was stressed about this first, and then we found out Simone had cancer, and then I was stressed about that. And then I don't know when the fuck anything's gonna happen. Like, I don't know if Simone's gonna have to quit tennis. I don't know, what, like, what the fuck is happening with people, and it's stressing me out. Like, I just want peace and happiness. Like, is that too much to ask? I want my family to stay together. Like, they're not. Obviously, like, Cam's for sure gonna get booted out of the friend group. Or maybe not boot it out, but he's going to stop hanging out with them. Which, honestly, I'm fine with him. I would rather him leave than, like, JR and Keisha. Like, that's obviously not happening. Because everyone's closer to JR and Keisha than they are with Cam. So, like, it's fine. And, like, I like Cam, just not as much as them. So, like, it's fine. But, like, I just wanted this season for everyone to stay friends. Because shit always happens. Always. It's like, what? What the fuck? I just... Honestly, no one needs this much stress. Okay, like, on the show, like, no one... Like, it's going to stress the whole group out when they start having issues and, like, a whole... Like, obviously, it's mostly Keisha, JR, Gabby, and Cam. But, like, it's going to affect them all because they're all friends. And Simone doesn't need any more stress from that. Keisha's already stressed about grad school and everything that's going on with Simone and just everything else. Like, she doesn't need that. And same with JR. He's, like, obviously worried about Simone, but also focused on, like, getting training and getting back into baseball and saving the team, which, honestly, I have no idea where the fuck that's going right now. But it's, like, they don't need any more stress. You know? It's like, they're, they're, their best friend already has cancer. Let's not add relationship drama to it, please. Like, if she didn't have cancer, I maybe would I would have been a little more okay with this. I mean, I wouldn't because I don't want them to get together. But it's like, can we not add more chaos and stress? Like, thankfully, relationship drama is more is way more fun than breast cancer. So I'll take that over like some other storyline any fucking day because I like literally I'm gonna want to cry every time she talks about it. It's like. They're going through enough. Let's not have the friend group go through even more drama. 
this phone's not going to be able to deal with it. She's already focused enough on, like, the way she's brushing her procedures to be able to play tennis. And then she's, like, freezing her eggs and lying to Lonnie and, like, lying to basically everyone. Because Amara and her mom don't even know about it yet, which, like, I get. Because, like, she doesn't want to tell Amara because of the job at the White House. And then her mom's, like, off doing something. I forgot what she said. But, like, she doesn't want to tell her to stress her out. And, like, I get it. But it's also, like, you need to tell your mom and your aunt about it. You know? Like, you just need to. Like, obviously, Amara's going to find a next episode, most likely. But it's, like, if she's upset about someone not telling her, I'm not going to blame her. Like, I don't care if someone's like, but I don't want to tell you because you're, like, working at the White House. Like, no, girl, I love you, but you should have said something. Like, in my opinion, Amara should have been one of the first people to know. Actually, your mom, probably. But, and then Amara. And then your friends. Or maybe her friends first because she actually lived with them. But, and they're actually there. But, like, the fact that they're going to try to hide it next episode from her, or at least from most of the episode, is insane. Like, I really hope someone in the group tells someone, like, no, you, like, you need to tell her. Like, that is your aunt. You need to tell her. Like, it's not okay to lie about this. Like, if it was, like, a little lie about, like, something simple, that's different. But it's, like, this is, li- like health wise like I, mean, I was gonna say life or death but she's also, like from the way they're saying it she's not at risk to die i don't think so it's like not that but it's your it's medical it's like very serious like what the hell like she's gonna figure it out eventually just fucking tell her like i guess she doesn't want to be treated differently and she wants everything to go as normal as possible and, like, for life to be normal, which I do get. And I feel like everyone who's, like, gone through, like, some sort of illness feels that way. And, like, they just don't want anything to change. They just want it to be different so they don't tell some people because they just don't want them to act differently around them. And I get that. You want it to be normal. But it's, like, you have to tell her. You know? Like, you, you just have to. Like, I don't... I don't know. I'm nervous. Cause I don't... I don't know where shit's going like i said last episode like we finally like got a storyline for simone we kind of know where her se- the season's going for her and, like yeah we know what's happening with her but i don't know where the fuck anything's going like most likely she's gonna have to quit tennis but like when how is her story gonna end like what the fuck is gonna happen like like oh my gosh like, i'm worried about her I'm worried about everyone, like, it's just, and that's why I'm so happy, like, she has, like I said, she has such a good friend group, because, like, like I talked about Nate and Keisha coming through, and, like, Thea as well, Thea's been great, not only with, like, the whole trainer situation that she, like, lied to Lonnie about, but she also, like, was convinced Lonnie to let her start practice or whatever they were doing, because she was like, oh, Simone, you do it. And she, she was like, you know, I would like to. Like, shout out to her for that as well. Because she really came through with that. Like, thank you, girl. I literally adore you. So, like, she came through with that. And, like, just, like, the way she's acting. She's matured, like, so much. And has become so much nicer. Like, honestly, I think she was always nice. And I always loved her. Even when she was, like, a bitch. But, like, I think you just had to get a specific side out of her. Like, we saw that in season one. Like, she had her moments where she was, when she was nice. And you just, it just depends what's going on with her. Like, she's really coming through. And I like that they're friends. Like, she, she, not only that she's friends with Simone, but she's friends with basically everyone now. Like, she's, she's really coming through. Same with JR. And, like, I said, because JR, like, has gone through something somewhat similar, like, with his health. Like, obviously not the same thing, but, you know, he's had an illness. It's affected his sport. He, like, had to stop for a while, and, like, now he's trying to come back. And, like, he's gone through shit. And he, like, I think is the best person for for Simone to go to. And, like, obviously we're seeing it, like, the way she's going to him a lot because of everything he's gone through. And he has been in his, her situation before in a way. Like, I hope you get what I'm saying. It's not like he had, like, the same exact illness as her, but he's gone through a health 
scare, not a scare, an illness that's affected him, like I said, and it's like, now she's going through a different one that's affecting her. And so her going to him is honestly smart because I feel like everyone is helpful in their own way, but I think he's the most helpful, especially because of everything that's happened with his sport. So I feel like when Simone has to like, take time away from tennis, he's going to be the best person for her to go to because he's he's been in that boat and now he's training to go back. And so maybe if she's able to go back in the future, he'll be the right person. You know, I just, I love JR. And I'm honestly happy we're seeing more of Simone and JR's friendship this season. Because like, if this storyline was still happening and we did not get to see as much of them, I was going to be pissed off. Because like, even before we found out Simone had cancer, we were getting quite a bit more of them because Damon's gone, obviously. And so we were getting more scenes of them, which I was really happy about. And then when we found out she has breast cancer, I was like, okay, if we don't get a lot of scenes with them, I'm going to be pissed off because it would make sense for them to have scenes, you know? So, like, he's coming through. Same with Lando. Lando, incredible. Like, I have to clap for him. Like, he coming through, really doing the thing with this friendship. I mean, (laughs) it's obviously more. And... Like, I kind of worried about where everything's going, especially because he's dating her sorority sister. And like I said last episode, she saw them hug and was kind of like giving them a look. So I feel like shit's going to happen there and she's going to get jealous and tell Lando to stay away from her at some point. And he's obviously not going to listen. Or he's going to listen at first, but then not because she has cancer. But honestly, I feel like he's not even going to listen. He's going to be like, no, like I have to be near her. But, like, he's coming through. Like, he really is coming through for everyone. It's not just her. I mean, he was there for Nate as well, which was incredible. But, like, with Simone, like, basically telling her, like, you're Simone. Like, you can do whatever you want. Like, you deserve everything. Like, everything good. It's like, you deserve it all, like, honestly. And the way he was telling her about his mom, about, like, how she was a plastic surgeon and, like, she wanted to help people, but, like, with money or something, she couldn't. So, she made her own practice or, like, business and, like, is doing it all and doing both. And basically, they tell him, well, like, you can, you can do both. You can do the fertility appointment and, like, freeze your eggs. And you can also do tennis, like, do your fitness test. Like, yes, they're at the same time, but you're someone Hicks. You can figure it out. You can do it. I'm happy he inspired her and pushed her to do that. Because, like, honestly, I want her to do what's best for her health, like I said. So, if missing the fitness test pro- would is best for her health, like, yeah. And I know it's going to kick her in the ass later. But I'm happy she's pushing right now and, like, doing what she wants until it's, like, too much for her, you know? I'm happy he pushed her to tell her, like, come up with an idea, figure out when you can, how you can move your fitness test. And she did. She did, and she's able to freeze her eggs, become a mom in the future, and also play tennis. Because, like, when she was talking about how what's more important, tennis, like, my future, and like, my family and, like, kids and whatever. And she was, like, saying it's it's insane, but, like, I can't choose. Which, like, I get, like, completely. Like, when you're an athlete, like, I obviously cannot relate because I am not athletic whatsoever. And, and to be fair, I have my own issues which is why I'm not really athletic, but it's like some people might think it's an easy choice, but when you're an athlete, like your life is also your sport. Like your sport is also your life. Like it's kind of like, like hard, like, you know? And so I get like some of them were like your, your, your future, your life, your like kids, like that's more important. Like you want to start a family that's more important than tennis, but some, for some people it's not like, you know, she wants to have a family in the future. She wants to get married. She wants to have kids. She wants that life, but she also wants to play tennis for as long as she can until it's too much. It's like, I'm happy we're going to actually see her try to do it because like, obviously it's not going to work out or most likely it's not going to work out, but I want to see her try, you know, I have, like I said, I'm happy she's not just giving up on tennis yet. 
I mean, she's going to have to. Honestly, I don't even think she's going to give it up. I think, like I said, somebody's going to have to tell her no. But, like, I don't know. I'm happy she talked about, like, wanting to start a family and talked about, what the fuck is that name? What, what's her kid's name? I know they said it. I'm such a fucking idiot. Wait, no. Wait, I'm such a fucking idiot. What the hell is her child's name? I'm literally looking up because I I remembered it before I started recording this. Hicks baby. Wait, wait what the fuck is No, what? Shay. Okay. I knew it started with an S. I was going like a different route, but I knew it started with an S. Okay, Shay. I don't know how how I forgot that. I really don't. Like, it's usually... I don't know why I always remember the baby's name. So, that was weird. But, Shay, I'm happy she talked about that. And talked that she does want kids in the future. You know? And, like, she's obviously grateful that she's able to, like, be in Shay's life and have a relationship with him. Like, shout out to, like, the adoptive parents. Like, I'm so happy they're okay with that. Because I think that's just such a, like, helped her character so much. But I was always wondering if, like, even after she did that, like, would she still want kids? Because obviously it was different. She was in high school. She wasn't ready. And, like, I'm happy she talked about, like, she does want kids. Like, she wants her own. She wants to get married again. Honestly, I'm kind of happy she didn't say again. But, I, because that would have been fucking hilarious. I mean... I, w- I would have been fine, because like I said, it would have been fucking hilarious if she said again, because I honestly forget that her and Jordan were married. I, I like, really do, and, and, until it's, like, brought up. It's like, I don't know why. It feels like, that just se- feels like a fever dream to me for some reason. Like, I don't remember it. So, like, I can't, actually, no, I kind of wish they brought it up, because, like, honestly, I fr- until, like, she said, I want to get married... I completely forgot, and then I realized, I'm like, oh, shit, yeah, I forgot she was married at one point, but I'm happy, like, she talked to her about her future with Thea and, like, said what she wants, but she wants to, like, play tennis for as long as possible, and same with Thea, like, Thea said like, she's thought about freezing her eggs, like, she thinks she wants to be a mom someday, but she wants to be able to play as long as she can, you know, it's like, I guess we'll just have to see because she started freezing her eggs. Her procedures start next week. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I assume we'll see, like, how everything's going next week. I'm just worried because like, the way they said she's doing, like, this treatment and speeding it up and doing it a different way so she can play tennis and be ready for when the season actually starts, it could come back stronger and I'm kind of worried that that, that's how the show might end like she might actually end up having it like even worse and like more aggressive which like honestly I don't think it's gonna happen because usually with shows they like to have happy endings at least with these type but honestly who the fuck knows like right now I don't know why I'm thinking of Dawson's Creek and like what happened in the end with that which if you if you know you know you probably know what I'm talking about and so thinking about that kind of concerns me because like maybe she's going to come back with it and die which obviously i hope does not happen i will literally bump my eyes out and i will never recover but like i just i just need her to thrive so like i'm ready to see how it goes i'm not excited like usually i'll be like i'm excited for the storyline i'm not i'm like actually nervous and but like i want to see how they do it and how it goes you know, like, I'm nervous though. I'm like fucking nervous. I just hope everyone comes through like they have been. I mean, everyone has, but like, I don't know. We'll have to see. Cause like, this is like a big storyline. Like, this is the storyline of the season. Like, this is the major one. And we have like little ones off, but like the, none of them are stressing me out as much. Like, with Nate's storyline this season, we have her, like, becoming a lawyer, like, going to law school and, like, dealing with that and helping around the school. And, like, specifically helping, like, Ezra, 
who, for, for people who don't remember who Ezra is, I'm honestly surprised I even remembered him. He's the guy in, like, episode two or three. I think it was episode three. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was episode three. It might have been episode two, though. Who the hell knows? But who got, who's in a wheelchair and got assaulted near campus or off camp campus and started, like, the whole thing of, like, we need more security and all that but i'm assuming like this like nate fighting for like different things in the school and like disability people with disabilities is kind of going to be her storyline this season since she is becoming a lawyer i mean i'm assuming or it was just a storyline for this episode because it hurt her cousin, yeah, her cousin came in town, which I'm honestly was happy that that happened because I always like seeing like families or like relatives of people, of characters coming in, like getting to know more about them, if they have issues, like what's going on. So I was intrigued when Lando and Nate were talking and she was like, I have not talked to her, like she's here, she wants to talk, like I haven't talked to her, we had like some sort of falling out and I don't know why but when they said that or like I was like okay it had to be something about her being non-binary I don't know why but like I just thought that's what happened like it could have been anything else I don't know why I just assumed that but I was I mean right because like obviously Valerie when she was in college, a freshman in college, she posted some a meme making fun of non-binary people. And it was when Nate was young, like, 14, and just figuring herself out, like, figuring out who she was. Like, and seeing that, obviously, is heartbreaking. It, it's heartbreaking at any age, like, no matter where you are in life. But it's, like, especially when you're still trying to figure yourself out and, like, figuring it out like who you are and seeing like a loved one post some shit like that is so upsetting like like it's so bad and like so like I get why Nate did not want to talk to her and like I get also like Valerie was like one day you just stopped talking to me like I she probably forgot honestly like I get a lot of people sometimes forget like what they've done like or they don't really know because like People forget what they repost on Instagram all the time. Like, I do too. Like, honestly, that's not a good excuse, obviously. Like, I'm I'm with Nate. And also, Valerie's excuse or, like, apologies. Like, I was young. Um, I, like, I I was young, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, you're young, but you should still know better. Like, like, what the hell? You know, like, I get it. Like, yeah, you are young. But then also you're not really, you're like a freshman in college. You should know better than that. You know, you should know, you shouldn't post anything that could be hurtful to anyone. Like, I don't care if like you don't know someone who is non-binary or you don't know anyone who's part of the LGBT community. Like you're not like, or some shit like that. You should never post something that's insensitive to people. I don't care if you know anyone personally who is like like, non-binary or, like, anything like that, you should not, you should never do that, okay? I'm just saying it. Like, I don't care. Like, you just shouldn't do it. It's not right. Like, don't post insensitive shit, okay? No matter, like, any, anything. Like, literally, you shouldn't. So, like, I was with Nate. Like, I don't care. I'm 100% with Nate. Like, I'm happy they were good, like, and they kind of redeemed themselves, especially, like, when Nate was, like, I, it's so upsetting to see someone who I looked up to so much and considered a best friend post something like that when I was still trying to figure myself out. And it's like, yeah, like, that's her. That can be so hurtful. And like, I'm happy they kind of forgave each other in the moment. And, like, Nate, like, was like, oh, it's okay. And they, they talked and she apologized, even though her first apology was pretty shitty. Like, I'm happy they came around because I like when in shows when relationships like with cousins sisters like literally whatever get resolved like i love it and it's like so nice to see so i was happy and then of course 
it got fucked on because she is supporting or it's not supporting she's the lawyer of the one of the guys who supported or not supported oh my god assaulted Ezra so that's fucked like honestly and I get I do get what she's saying when she's like I'm like just started out like lawyer or whatever like I didn't they put me there like I don't have a choice of who I can support and be like a lawyer for, for. I'm like yeah but also I just don't approve of you supporting him like he literally assaulted a disabled guy like and your cousin is trying to help Ezra and the, the, the disabled get through this and help protect them and support them and you're doing this girl huh. I'm honestly kind of happy that Nick cut her off again like because here's the thing I don't know if I was in Nate's position would I like the fr- the non-binary post would I have forgiven her I mean maybe it, w- it would have taken a better apology to be honest but then with this is just the icing on the cake so that would be like okay peace out girl like you're done bye you know like like with that whole thing it's making me wonder if like she's going to come back and be kind of a story part of Nate's storyline I feel like because they did what they did with her being the lawyer I feel like it's going to be a thing because when she just came for a bit at when we were first like figuring out what happened with them I was like okay maybe this is just an episode thing to resolve since they always used to talk about being lawyers together and she is one and Nate's going to be one soon or is going to law school but then now like knowing that she's the lawyer I feel like this is going to be a storyline for Nate and like Nate's going to be helping Ezra and just helping around the school or like I don't know that's what I think the fuck knows i just i was interested though with this storyline because like i said i like when they do like like bring relatives in because i think it's interesting so like it was a good storyline for nate and if this is where nate's storyline is going like not against her cousin but like helping ezra and standing up for the disabled in the school especially with everything that's going on i think it's a good storyline and I'm excited to see it honestly because I feel like this storyline I'm more excited to see than any of the others because all the other ones stress me out and also I'm just going to throw this out there now I need more of Lando and Nate okay like I'm just throwing that out there I need more of them because their like little friendship like we barely got any scenes of them and even Lando or Nate at one point said, like, we don't talk, like, go to each other, or whatever. Like, their scenes were so cute. Like, I was kind of here for it, and I want more of them. I want more of just Lando and everyone. Like, we get Lando and Cam occasionally. We get Lando and JR. But, like, I need Lando and Keisha now. Like, I need their friendship. You know? I just want more of Lando and them. Because I love Lando. Obviously, you guys know that. I literally adore him. And I need more of him. And also, honestly, I want to know what his storyline is for the season as well. Or if his storyline is just being, like, the friend and being there for Simone. And then eventually him and Simone getting together. Because since he was a series regular, I assumed we were going to get some sort of storyline with him. But, like, honestly, we might not. Which I'm... As long as he's in every episode and him and Simone get together by the end of it, I'm fine with it. And also, I don't want them to add a storyline now. Because we're halfway done. You know, like, that's so stupid. If we find out next episode, he has a storyline, I'm gonna get really annoyed. But then, honestly, who the hell knows? I don't know what the fuck's happening next episode. I just know Amara's coming back. They're going to try to hide it. They're all gonna help her try to hide it, apparently. Or, honestly, maybe they're just saying that. I feel like someone's not going to help. And then we know Thea is in next episode. Because I did not think she was... When the stills came out, I was nervous. She is, so we're all good. And I don't know what else. Yes, I guess we'll see. I mean, I don't 
fucking know. Like, we just know someone's going to start treatments. Things are going to get harder. She's going to tell Amara. JR and Gabby and Kim and Keisha are probably going to have issues. Keisha and JR are going to get closer. And I'm just going to say this now, but I think Keisha might have realized she has feelings for JR. Is it just me or was she just sad about what's going on with Keisha? Not Keisha, oh my gosh. Going on with Cam. Because, like, when she left after... Or, like, well, first when they hugged, I was kind of like, oh, okay. Like, I feel like maybe she's realizing. But then when she walked away and we saw Jar and Gabby talk before their dinner and her outside, like, kind of, cr- not crying, but, like, getting over just crying. I was like, okay. Either, like, okay. she's upset about with Cam because he did just text her. Or he did text her a little bit after that. Or she has feelings for Jar, Or she's realizing it. I don't know. I guess we'll see next episode. Because I think next episode's when the shit's really going to start with them. It's already starting. But I, this is when it's going to get farther. But other than that, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen next week. So I guess we'll see. But I think I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you so much for listening. I don't know what else I'm going to say. So... I'll see you guys next week for episode 7.